Hi there, my name is Mark Greenberg, Product Marketing Group Director at Cadence, responsible for memory technologies including HBM and GDDR6, and today I'll be talking a little bit about how to decide uh, for your chip between HBM memory technology and GDDR6 memory technology. And I'll tell you now, if you're a gamer figuring out how to frag somebody better, don't listen to the rest of this, you can drop out now. But anybody who's building a chip, please come listen. So I wanted to introduce the technologies from a very high level and then talk about a couple of things that are specific to uh, HBM and, and to GDDR6 technologies. So looking at these technologies in planar view, looking at them down from the top, an HBM2 device is really a stack up of, of uh, pieces of silicon on top of other pieces of silicon. I've got two dies here. I've got my CPU or GPU or my SOC uh, connected to my HBM2 DRAM. These two devices sit on top of a silicon interposer, which actually does the connection between the two dies. That silicon interposer sits in a package. That package sits, in, sits on a PCB. Okay, And um, the advantage of using HBM technology is that this silicon interposer provides us with a very, very short connection between the uh, CPU die and the memory die. These guys are really close together. They're going to be about, uh, uh, they're going to be less than a millimeter apart. So they're going to be really close together, which is good to make a really low energy interface. There's also a very good signal integrity channel between the CPU die and the HBM die in the silicon interposer. So I can send signals across this interface uh, with very low energy and, uh, and in a very short period of time. The other nice thing about the silicon interposer is that it is, uh, it is micro bumped, which means that I can have a lot of connections between my SOC and my HBM device. Uh, for HBM2, the standard allows for 1,024 data pins between the, uh, between the CPU and the HBM device. And in fact, uh, this, this interface doesn't actually take up that much room. I could have uh, typically up to two of these interfaces per side of my SOC if, if I wanted to do that. So I could get really a lot of bandwidth out of this interface. How much bandwidth? So I've got 1,024 data pins. The current JEDEC standard for HBM2 calls for a 2 gigabit per second data transfer rate between these dies. Uh, and actually what's happening, you'll see memory manufacturer data sheets that may have higher data rates, and there's future development happening towards even higher data rates than this. What this gives us, if we follow the JEDEC standard, is that it gives us uh, 2,000 uh, gigabits per second of memory bandwidth between these two dies, or 2 terabits per second of memory bandwidth. It's a lot of bandwidth. You can really do a lot with it. Uh, but there's some things that are disadvantages with this technology. Firstly, it is, it is a complicated thing to manufacture. And there's some additional costs in manufacturing that don't exist in other memory technologies like GDDR6, which we'll talk about. Um, so the, we have the cost here, uh, the cost of designing the interposer, to the design of manufacturing the interposer, and the, the cost of assembling the stack uh, can run into a little bit of money. Also, this HBM2 DRAM device also has an additional die in its stack, which it, it contributes to uh, additional cost as well. So there's some cost implications of this, and then there's some concerns in the industry for certain applications like automotive applications that um, uh, that there would be a, uh, um, a lifetime reliability issue when putting a silicon interposer into a high reliability environment. So there's some, some concerns there. If we look at GDDR6 by comparison, uh, GDDR6 really follows the same technology that we've used in the past for uh, connecting a, a CPU, GPU, or SOC to, uh, to a DRAM die. These uh, live on a PCB together, and they connect just using the, using the normal way that we would connect any two dies on a PCB. So uh, if you're using DDR4 today, if you're using LPDDR4 today, uh, putting, these onto the, uh, putting these onto a PCB should be a relatively familiar task, and it's a, it's a, it's a familiar way of doing your manufacturing. Uh, but what's the cost? Well, the cost is that you don't get as much bandwidth as you do using this very high-tech solution that we have with HBM2. So in GDDR6, what I do is I put a, a very high-speed interface on each one of these data pins. In fact, in our designs, we, uh, we do it based on uh, our CERTES technology, our 16 gigabit per second CERTES technology. And what we end up here with, uh, from die to die bandwidth, the GDDR6 dies have got two 16 data bit uh, buses. And uh, the data rates, depending on manufacturer, depending on application, uh, may be between 12 and 18 gigabits per second per pin. So we end up with a bandwidth in the range of 384 to 576 gigabits per second. Uh, so a little bit less than the DDR, uh, a, little, a little bit less than the HBM, but 
Um, what we can do, of course, with GDDR6 is we can have multiple interfaces, just like we could have multiple interfaces with the HBM2. So what's the downside? Because GDDR6 is sounding pretty good right now. Well, what's the downside? The downside is this is, first of all, it's a higher energy interface because we're having to transfer signals across the interface a, a larger distance, uh, also at a higher data rate. Uh, that, takes a, that takes a larger amount of energy. And um, the fact that we've got a lot of signals uh, moving at a high data rate in the same direction across a PCB means that there's a really complex amount of design work that needs to be done to, uh, to design this interface. Effectively, what we're doing here is silicon package board co-design, uh, which again, we've got great tools for at Cadence, but um, it's still a design task that, uh, that will need to be accomplished. So um, when deciding between these two technologies, there's a number of things that you have to think about. Uh, bandwidth is certainly one. If you need the absolute highest bandwidth, HBM2 is probably the way to go. If you need a little bit less bandwidth or if you're willing to put more dyes around, uh, around your SOC, then GDDR6 is an option. Uh, HBM2, you've got a manufacturing issue that you've got to deal with. GDDR6, you've got a silicon package board co-design issue that you've got to deal with. Um, they're both great technologies. Which one is the right for you it will be determined by your bandwidth and your design capability. So that's my Whiteboard Wednesday. Uh, tune in again for more.